Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Flex and Reflex Sunday Sit Down. And uh, I've decided to come in outside. It's a beautiful morning today. Let me show you what it's, I um, can't really see the, just how beautiful the blue sky is um, here. It's like, it's winter, it's cold, but in the sun, it's beautiful. So I'm enjoying, enjoying the time. So let's get to some questions. So if this is the first time you're joining this, it's a weekly segment I do where I get a bunch of questions that are either asked by clients, sent in from all over the place, and I like to answer answer them here in I don't know, sort of like a 15 sort of minute time frame. Often it goes over. So let's get uh, straight to it. Uh, what's the most challenging workout you've ever done and what did you learn from the experience? Um, hmm. Well, I guess probably one of the most, I'm thinking of two things. One of the most challenging workouts I, I ever did, I just decided this the one day I wanted to mix things up and it was to do 100 pull-ups and 100 push-ups. That was the whole workout. And just doing the maths and thinking about, well, obviously I can't do 100 pull-ups in one go. I think the most that I could do at the time was probably 17 in one go. And then I'm like, generally what happens is um, I would drop two repetitions for every set that I would do. So just do the maths and that takes a long time to do those. So what I was doing was um, having a, you know, about a 30 second to a minute break and, uh, you know, the work had quite some time to do. I think I started with the pull-ups first, uh, got the hundred through and then worked on the, the hundred push-ups. and uh, it was a hard workout. I was sore. I was sore for a few days after that. So that one comes to mind. It took, I don't know, it took about 45 minutes, I think, to do. Another one, I used to do this uh, commando style um, retreats with uh, with clients. And uh, we would, essentially, the idea was to use uh, the same sorts of techniques that the Australian commandos used to train in the SAS and, uh, and so forth for um, you know, armed force combat training and that kind of stuff, with obviously without the weapons. Uh, at the the main keys being making it very, very physically challenging, but also it's a, it's about the mindset and uh, really tapping into that and really getting people to dig deep to go to that next level. And so that would normally start with a a, a pre dawn workout that would be like a five k hike through sand. Um, and then we'd have this 45 degree angle of uh, wall of sand that would probably be oh, 50 meters, uh, climbing to the top of that, pushing tires to the top of that, and then throwing tires down, pulling them back up with a rope, doing that hundreds of times, um, uh, doing that, and then hiking back to the start point, having some lunch, then going to another afternoon session and uh, yeah, very, very intense, intense stuff. And a lot of the time I'm just coaching and I'm doing the walking, but not doing all the, all the other aspects of it uh, in between because I'm like encouraging, motivating and, and just helping people get through it. Uh, so that's also a, a very, very tough one, very long and, uh, you know, tiring day. Everybody sleeps really well uh, at the end, at the end of that. But uh, I guess the the key with the, with my training is what's sustainable and what's what's progress. So it's not always about doing what's the hardest workout I can ever come up with to do, uh, because I need to be able to recover within two days to come back and and do it all uh, do it all again, different body part and that kind of stuff. So you've got to be smart smart about it. But that probably answers your question. Uh, how do you incorporate? Uh, flexibility and mobility exercise into your routine to prevent injury as well. Um, I'm not a, I like to make them the best use of my time. In some ways, flexibility can be overrated. It really depends on what it is that you're, you're wanting to achieve with your, your health and wellness. If flexibility is something that's important to you, uh, then you've just got to be consistent with it. The most flexible clients I have are all women that have done dancing for years and years when they were much, much younger, and they still tend to retain that flexibility. Or people that are doing yoga on a regular basis as well. Me personally, I I like to warm up my body. I I never stretch uh, to start with because uh, to me, you're not warm yet. Uh, so I like to just say, pick one exercise that I'm going to do. Let's say like this morning, I did legs, for instance. So I'll start with leg press and I'll start on. So for me, I started on 80 kilos. I did 12 repetitions of those. 
I then do seven repetitions on the the next weight, which was a hundred. Then I did five reps on one twenty, and then I did a uh, three reps on one forty, and then I did twelve reps on one forty five. Uh, no, actually, I did twelve on one forty, then twelve on one forty five, um, and that's certainly by no means that the heaviest I've I've ever been. But I'm I'm just kind of working back into uh, getting setting some goals back to getting uh, that strength back. And then after every single exercise, every set that I do, I will then do some stretching. Like in that case, I stretch my quads, I stretch my hamstrings as well after every single set. So I don't tend to, let's say, finish the workout and then sit down and, and stretch for 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I incorporate it as part of my rest because I don't want to waste, I'll say waste, I have the time at the end of the workout. So that's the that's the way that I, I approach it. And um, yeah, and then I went for um, uh, like about a five kilometer walk after that, just to get the lactic acid out of the out of the legs. Um, so yeah, it really depends on what it is that you're you're looking uh, to do. Um, so last night I was watching it's I think it's called American Sweethearts, uh, which is about Dallas uh, cheerleaders, and I, I'm not watching it for you know like a perf fest or what you may think I'm watching it for. Uh, it's it's the high performance aspects of what goes in to uh, the cheerleaders being cheerleaders and high performance and uh, like the biggest cheerleading brand in the world. And uh, if you, so flexibility is super, super important for them because what they're renowned for is doing these lines of high leg kicks. You know, you go one leg up, other leg up, other leg up. And, and and if you don't have the flexibility, you can't get your leg right up to around your ears kind of thing, which is what they need. And they need them all to do it because it's all about um, the precision, the aesthetics, the timing and all that kind of stuff. So obviously that's really important for them. So they've got to consistently work on it every single day. Um, for me, it's just about, uh, you know, helping recovery, prevent soreness and, and that kind of stuff. So all right, next question. Uh, what is one habit you've developed that has had the most significant positive impact on your life? Well, if you don't already listen to me, I do two podcasts a day. One's called The Mental Toughness and Body Show and the other one is called Rob Evans 365. And so I've been talking about some of these things over the last couple of days. So if I was to pull out one habit that has really moved me from where it was that I wanted to be to where I am now and helps propel me to move forward. It's focusing on continuous improvement. So how do I grow myself every day? What What is something that I can learn every single day to make me better today, make me better than yesterday? And what can I learn today to help me be better than tomorrow? Um, other way around, to be better tomorrow. So every single day, looking for what are those incremental uh, in, improvements that I, I can be making. And I find that if I am not doing that seven days a week, there was a time in my life, probably 10 years, you know, maybe even six years ago, where I wasn't doing that every day. And I would find that I'd maybe after a couple of weeks or whatever, I'd find that hmm, I'm not really getting the outcomes that I was, say, a couple of weeks ago. And why is that? And it's come back to uh, my sense of satisfaction, knowing that I'm not growing every single day. So now I do it seven days a week. Like this, I do it on a Sunday. It's like forcing me to continue to add value to people. You've got to consistently practice the, you know, what you preach. You've got to consistently push when you don't want to. Is it easier for me now? It's a nice day. I could be sitting on the banana lounge right here or in the sauna right there and uh, just chilling out and doing and doing nothing. Or I can continue to add value to people. And so that's why I do two podcasts a day, every single day, seven days a week. That's why I've done over 3,400 podcasts now. It's why I do this on a Sunday. It's why I, I when I finish this, I will then um, load it up. Um, but then I will uh, be working on uh, reviewing my week that was. How did I go this week? What did I set out to do last week that I wanted to have done by now? What didn't I do? What did I do? How can I improve for the next week and set next week up for success as well. Um, so for me, that's about that uh, stopping, reflecting, continuously looking at how can I improve myself? How can I grow myself every single day? So that means for me, I do things like I read the Wall Street Journal. You can subscribe to that uh, for about $2 a month, something like that. So I read that to help uh, get my 
my worldly knowledge about what's going on in business. I read Forbes as well. These are all just online. I also look at my my browser, which I think is Bing, uh, on my desktop, and I look at the Australian sort of headlines. There's some global stuff in there too, but it's mainly for the Australian stuff because I get my other views from from those other things, um, like the Wall Street Journal and Forbes. And then I will I will read certain books around. Uh, like right now, it's focusing on customer service and that high level. How can I provide wow experiences for people? What can I learn from people like Disney and Starbucks and Mercedes and um, you know the Ritz Carlton and things like that that I can then in implement into my own business and then i'm also reading uh i was going to say flex and reflect my own magazine <laughs> um muscle and fitness which they don't produce that magazine anymore they have online content but i enjoy uh, looking at uh, the old magazines and looking for inspiration and and so forth through uh through that as well so that would be probably the single biggest habit if I was to pull out just one, there's so, there's so many, but if I was to pull out one, that would be the one that I would, um, I would, I would pull out. Uh, okay. There's some, some questions here that I've answered before is, you know, like how, how do you tailor your approach, uh, to suit unique needs and goals of each client? You can go back and listen to previous episodes of that. It's a, it's a common question, uh, that I, I get asked and you can go back and, and have a listen to that. Um, all right, uh, there's a technology question here. Uh, emerging trends in health and fitness industry that you're excited about. Yeah, there's nothing. Um, if I'm honest, I think um, I often have this conversation with with uh, successful people and um, the, the health and fitness industry has got a lot to answer for. Uh, there's a lot of people in the industry that are not good for the industry, uh, not good for, it's about them as opposed to about uh, their clients. Uh, I don't like that. Uh, th look, there's somebody out there always designing a a new piece of equipment. Um, to me, that's no one's going to come up with that. Like a, a new piece of equipment that's going to radically change health and fitness forever, because people are looking for shortcuts, and there is no shortcut to your health. You have to do things consistently throughout the day, every single day for the rest of your life, if you want to optimize your health. So there's not one machine or a pill or an injection or anything like that that's going to come along that's going to change that. Because if it was, if I could just click my fingers and say, bang, your health and everything is fine, what is going to be left is, well, I haven't done the work. I haven't earned it. And so now my mindset starts to suffer. Because we've got to do something, and we if we don't see that we're taking action to improve ourselves, we get worse. Now mental health suffers, and that's why we have this this global pandemic, if you like, of of mental health illnesses because people aren't working on that. So if you're looking for those shortcuts, forget it, because it's not going to help you, and there isn't a shortcut to success. You've you've got to do the work. Uh, so there's there's not really any tech that's coming along that I'm excited about. I do enjoy uh, using uh, AI and the Chat GPT, uh, which is what I use every day, uh, which really helps me to have um, you know really good conversations. And like I was saying about uh, Muscle and Fitness, for instance, so I might look at uh, some a magazine that's back in the '80s. And I'll think, oh, gee, I wonder what, that's an interesting, you know, like little article or whatever. I say, I wonder what research either still supports that now or what has changed. And I'll jump into ChatGPT and do some work in that and see what has changed, what stayed the same. And then I might do a post or, or something around that because I find that that's the left brain side of me, um, uh, you know, finding that interesting uh, because um, we only really reflect on the current news and the current things that are coming through through for us and not reflecting back on so what was that like you know back in 1980 what was it like back then when i first started 36 years ago 1988 what did that look like uh, back then what does that look like now also interestingly i've been looking at some old uh, magazines in the in the 90s and they talk about uh or even in the early 2000s, like these influences and, uh, you know, how many followers they've got on Instagram and that kind of stuff and looking at where they are now. And it's interesting to see, wow, um, that person was not on a success of growth and you either, you know, they're non-existent or, um, 
uh, you know, they really haven't built on that success, even though they're, out, they're in a magazine or whatever. So I find that, you know, some of that stuff interesting. But there's no there's no one, you know, new piece of technology or like I use my Apple Watch here. They'll keep adding different features to that. But uh, again, they're not going to change anything or come up with anything that's going to dramatically change uh, how I live my life. I think there'll be more, you know, perhaps more data. data. Data is powerful. Obviously, we have, if you think back, well, it might even be 10 years ago, Maybe it's more um, about like you can wear your device and uh, get uh, data on your sleep and your habits and all, all that kind of stuff. And there'll be more things that that come along that perhaps there'll be something that can, uh, you know, give us data just by wearing a watch on your blood pressure or um, yeah, I think the ultimate is that it thinks about, you know, you can do a little drop of blood or something and it'll tell you everything that you, you need to know. I mean, that's really, really futuristic. Uh, to, uh, to see something like that, but um, that would be, you know, something that you could say, well, I could get excited about that, but there's nothing at the moment. Uh, oh, okay, let's let, leave uh, this for the, the last question. How do you maintain balance in your life to ensure you're not only successful, but also happy and fulfilled? Well, a lot of people say to me, you know you don't always have to be so focused. You don't always have to be working seven days a week. When do you have fun? Your life sounds boring, et cetera, et cetera. Well, if you pick, say if you're in sport, for instance, let's let's just say Messi, for instance, probably the most successful athlete on the planet given everything that, that he's accomplished and still going uh, good on him. Uh, I guarantee if you followed him around for 24 hours, you would be bored with the things that he does and maybe follow him around for a week and say, what, you're doing that again? Uh, why? Because he's the most successful person on the planet for in, in sporting terms for a reason. It's routine, high-performance routine, and, and it's doing the same things that are successful over and over and over again. So that means eating the same types of foods, having the same morning routine, having the same evening routine, uh, doing the same sorts of things in training, doing some different things in training as well to keep the, the muscles growing and challenging and to be nurturing those, um, uh, knowing your limitations. So I think about uh, like Tom Brady and the older that he got and then he started working with his his fitness coach and he started working with him more and more and that caused um, a lot of dissension with um, Bill Belichick because it was like he's doing stuff that is not in accordance with what the um, the Patriots strength and conditioning coaches were saying, but the work he was doing was very different because it was um, helping him look after his body, look after his arm, help him be better than he was ever before because he was doing things a little bit differently uh, to you know, the traditional heavy strength and, and training work and so forth. It wasn't, it wasn't good for him. Just like for, for me, I can't do the same super, super heavy lifts that I used to when I first started my training on the first five to 10 years of my training. Uh, I just can't do that anymore. And it's not worth it. Like, do you want to be in pain in your joints just for the sake of saying, yes, I did that number? Like, what, what's the point? You would rather have that longevity and enjoyment in what it is that you're doing and so I tell you that because uh, success always leaves clues and uh, the most successful people on the planet will have fairly what you might consider boring routines, but that's why they consistently get those high performance results. They did something different every single day. Say, so, oh, look, I'll just have, uh, I'll have Maccas today uh, instead of that highly nutritious meal uh, that's balanced with the protein and the plant-based food and so forth. At some point, they're not going to feel great. Their focus may not be great. Uh, Messi misses that split second opportunity to get the pass. And rather than uh, getting it at that right moment, he misses it or, or connects it slightly late, which is the difference between going in the goals and going over the goals or hitting the post. You know, it's a, it's it's those little things. And that's how these things add up. So uh, it's, um, you know, it, it's those small things that, that really make the uh, make the difference between uh, success and failure. So, um, in terms of how how do you balance that? Uh, for me, uh, I don't know that you ever get the balance. I don't, I don't like the word balance because I, for me, it's about the, how you manage your energy and you're shifting it. So for right now, I'm focused completely on this, 
um, people would look at the the volume of the work that I put out. And somebody sent me a message yesterday saying, you're a content producing machine. And uh, yes, I am, because that's that's just something that I'm I'm driven to do. You've got to be consistent. I want to lead by example to show that this is my work ethic. This is what I do every single day to help me be more successful. Now, if that can aspire you that are listening to this, to you to be a greater version of you, for you to perhaps be a little bit more focused on your health and wellness every single day, to guarantee you you'll live longer and you'll live healthier and maybe you'll be pain free and maybe you'll bring out that better version of yourself maybe we can you'll continue to progress every day you'll be happier and i can have played a role in in that for you so for me i don't think about oh i need to stop now it's a weekend i need to get that balance in my life uh, for me, I work seven days a week. It's just, I'm doing different types of work. Today's my only Sunday, my only non-client facing day. I enjoy being able to have my only sleep in for the week today, uh, which is really good. I don't have to worry about the clock with my workout, uh, today. I get up first, I have a shower I get changed and go do my workout, uh, first thing in my studio. Uh, I don't have to worry about the clock. I can take longer if I want to. It generally takes me about 45 minutes, something like that. Then I go for a walk. I do those things. For me, that's about getting some balance in, in my life and uh, enjoying those aspects to take some time, time out, enjoy some nature and and so forth. Uh, but for me, it's for me, balance is about doing those things consistently. Like I said before about the continuous improvement, the self-development, having some more time, say, on, on the weekend to to do that. Uh, if my daughter's with me, then, uh, you know, spending some time uh, with her. Uh, she's got a new dog. So whether we, you know, take the dog for a walk, have a bit of play with the dog or watch a movie or have some laughs together or, or something like that. Uh, for me, that's what uh, that's what the balance for me is about. But I, I'm obsessed with success and bringing out the best version of myself. So the more time I can spend on that is to me about the balance for me. And that fills me up. So um, I'm always giving parts of me to other people. And it's like the bucket or, or this, if you like. So I've got this much left to give. As soon as that is empty, guess what? There's nothing left to give. So I've got to find ways of filling that back up so that I continue to give more and more of that out. So it might be, so later on today, I might have a sauna. That's a way for me to give back to me. That's an, an enjoyment part for me. I jump in there. I'll do some strategic thinking, thinking about, okay, what are the, some of the things that I can do over this next week to help propel me to that, that next level? And to me, that's about balance. That's about the fun uh, side of life for me. I get that that's not everybody's cup of tea, which is why I get a lot of criticism from people that say, well, you're just boring. You know, why don't you go out and, you know, drink and do drugs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, to me, that's not my definition of fun. I just love, um, you know, love the the way that I do things. And I just, just love the, uh, love fun in my way, doing it that way. So just like um, if you want a picture of, of fun, have a look at this. Like there's whiskers looking at him. He's like soaking it up in the sun right there, just loving, loving life out here. So that's me out for today. Thanks for all those questions. Keep sending them through and uh, I will see you next week. Have a great week, everybody.